course, it's similar to the image we obtained from the Hubble Space Telescope on July 21st, uh, which was enigmatic because there was an extension of the image in the direction of the sun as if there is a jet. The James Webb Space Telescope is watching Saturn's empty far side when it detects something massive, moving deliberately, reflecting light in patterns no asteroid should, and sending out a radio pulse eerily like the wow wow signal. Webb just confirmed our biggest suspicion. 3i Atlas isn't just a rock. If it's maneuvering and metallic, who or what is adjusting its course? The answers start now. 10 hours of continuous observation. That's how long the James Webb Space Telescope trained its sensors on Saturn's far side, capturing every subtle shift in light and energy. This wasn't a routine glance. Webb's operators selected a polar vantage, maximizing the line of sight through Saturn's upper atmosphere and into the faintest reaches beyond the rings. At the heart of this campaign were two instruments, NearSpec, the Near Infrared Spectrograph, and NearCam, the Near Infrared Camera. NearSpec dissected the incoming light, sorting it by wavelength with a precision that reveals the fingerprints of molecules, ions, and, if present, anything that might reflect or emit in ways nature doesn't expect. NearCam, meanwhile, mapped the faintest glows and shadows, sensitive enough to register changes invisible to ground telescopes or even Hubble. The spectral range covered by Webb's instruments stretches from 0.6 to 5 microns, opening a window on phenomena as cold as Saturn's clouds and as energetic as the planet's auroras. Over the course of those 10 hours, Webb's detectors remained locked, minimizing noise and background interference. This approach allowed for the detection of features as subtle as a fraction of a percent above the background, enough to spot even the faintest anomaly. The data collected set a new baseline for what's possible, establishing a level of detail and confidence that makes every subsequent anomaly impossible to ignore. Within minutes of the first data download, Webb's team noticed something that didn't fit any model of Saturn's upper atmosphere. Scattered across the planet's polar cap, a chain of dark, bead-like structures appeared. Small, sharply defined regions where the infrared emission dipped far below the surrounding auroral glow. Each bead drifted slowly, following a path that hugged the edge of Saturn's northern auroral oval. The spacing between them was almost rhythmic, as if some unseen process was arranging them in a pattern. Beneath this layer, about 500 kilometers lower, NearCam revealed another surprise. A four-armed star-shaped structure etched into the stratosphere. Two arms pointed directly toward the vertices of Saturn's famous hexagon, while the others stretched into the darkness, less distinct but unmistakably present. The alignment wasn't perfect, but the vertical correspondence between the beads above and the star arms below suggested a kind of atmospheric column, linking layers separated by hundreds of kilometers. No previous mission, neither Cassini nor Hubble, had resolved features this fine. The expectation had been broad, diffuse bands of emission, shaped by Saturn's magnetic field and turbulent winds. Instead, Webb's sensitivity uncovered a geometry that defied simple explanation. Most scientists pointed to complex magnetospheric interactions or vertical energy transfer as likely causes, but the precision of the arrangement left room for deeper questions. For now, the working assumption remained natural origins, but the data had already unsettled the line between the expected and the unknown. Doppler tracking and vector analysis quickly ruled out any chance of these features being passive drifting with Saturn's winds alone. The data from NIR spec revealed acceleration spikes, brief, sharp deviations in the apparent motion of the bead structures, each lasting less than five minutes and recurring at uneven intervals. Residuals in the velocity curve showed departures as high as 0.7 meters per second squared, far above what Saturn's upper atmosphere could account for through turbulence or magnetic drag. 
These anomalies didn't match the expected signature of atmospheric waves or known magnetospheric currents. Instead, the motion appeared almost corrective, with each spike nudging the beads back into their patterned chain after a slow drift. Dr. Elena Park, an orbital dynamics specialist, reviewed the data and noted, we're seeing changes that can't be explained by natural forces alone. The vectors line up with a process that's actively maintaining position, not simply responding to local conditions. This was the first hard evidence that the system's behavior defied any passive body model, raising questions about the origin and intent behind such precise, repeated course adjustments. At precisely 417 UTC, a sharp vertical spike appeared on the NIR spec waterfall plot, an unmistakable signature in the midst of Saturn's diffuse auroral background. The signal's bandwidth measured less than one hertz, so narrow it cut through the noise like a scalpel. Unlike the broad, shifting traces typical of planetary auroras, this event persisted for just under 73 seconds, holding steady at 1420.405 MHz, the hydrogen line. That frequency has long been a target for SETI searches, but never before had it appeared in perfect temporal sync with a web infrared anomaly. Dr. Marcus Haldane, lead analyst for the Radio Cross Correlation Team, reviewed the alignment between the NIR spec spike and the faint IR emission from the bead chain. The timing is exact to the second, he noted. Whatever's producing the narrow band event is either locked to Saturn's atmospheric process or it's something else entirely. No ground-based observatory reported a matching signal and RFY logs were clear. The event's isolation, combined with its spectral purity and Webb's spatial lock on the beads, forced the team to consider possibilities outside the standard planetary playbook. For now, the only certainty was the data. A narrowband, hydrogen line spike, perfectly synchronized with the most mysterious pattern ever recorded above Saturn. Infrared spectra alone couldn't explain the beads and star pattern. Webb's team turned to MIRI, the mid-infrared instrument, hoping for clues in the way these features absorbed and emitted heat. Instead of the broad, diffuse glow expected from Saturn's upper atmosphere, the MIRI data revealed a series of sharp emissivity peaks, narrow bands where energy was absorbed and released with surgical precision. These peaks didn't match any known atmospheric molecule or ice. Their reflectance ratios, plotted against wavelength, traced a jagged line more reminiscent of polished metal than planetary gas. Professor Aisha Rahman, a specialist in planetary materials, reviewed the spectral signatures. We're seeing spikes at 8.2 and 11.9 microns, values that shouldn't be possible for natural silicates or ices. The only terrestrial analogs are engineered alloys, the kind we use in satellite mirrors or thermal shielding. The data showed a specular quality. Light bounced off the bead structures in a way that suggested smooth metallic surfaces. Yet there was no evidence of debris, no sign of a solid object drifting through Saturn's clouds. The anomaly was defined by its spectral fingerprint, not its shape. For the first time, the possibility of manufactured composition entered the conversation, not as proof, but as a challenge to every natural explanation on record. Ephemeris plotting traced the anomaly's journey with unsettling precision. Over a span of weeks, the object's path skirted Saturn's outermost ring, then arced in a series of calculated flybys past Titan and Rhea. Each maneuver aligned with predicted gravitational assists, yet the timing fell just outside what natural orbital drift could account for. Dr. Victor Ames, a mission trajectory analyst, described it as a choreography that resembles a survey pattern more than a random pass. Scheduled close approaches at intervals of 3.7 days, then 8.1, mapped out a grid across Saturn's magnetosphere as if the object was systematically scanning the environment. 
The flyby geometry, when reconstructed from Webb's data, suggested intent. Not a single looping orbit, but a series of deliberate, data-rich passes. The implication was clear, even if the motive remained hidden. This was not a passive wanderer, but something that seemed to be gathering information. Questions multiply as the data settles. If an object can trace a path so precise, is it acting with purpose? Or is it simply obeying some deeper law we haven't grasped? The line between observer and observed begins to blur. Each new set of coordinates, each spectral anomaly, forces a reckoning. Are we tracking a phenomenon, or is something tracking us? Dr. Haldane's team debates the implications late into the night, their screens glowing with countdown timers. The next scheduled web observation, March 17, 2026, draws closer with every passing hour. In the silence that follows each data review, a single thought lingers. What if the anomaly is waiting for us, as much as we are for it? The calendar becomes a kind of clock, measuring not just time, but the distance between certainty and the unknown. The wait for the next window has never felt longer. On November 29, 2024, the James Webb Space Telescope recorded 10 hours of continuous data above Saturn's North Pole, an unprecedented window that captured not only the planet's natural wonders, but also the first verifiable evidence of 3i slash Atlas. Three independent lines of data, trajectory anomalies, a narrowband radio spike, and metallic spectral signatures have now been documented with raw datasets archived by the Webb Science Team. Despite these findings, the object's origin, purpose, and full composition remain classified or unknown. The scheduled orbital path, set to bring 3i slash Atlas within close range of multiple planets, is confirmed by ephemeris calculations and posted in the official mission logs. With the next web observation window set for March 17, 2026, the central question remains. Are we witnessing a natural phenomenon or deliberate reconnaissance? As the countdown continues, the evidence leaves us with one fact. Our search for answers has only just begun.